Tom and Kim, this is a very good question so mm -hmm. from Teresia. Okay. Um, uh, do we trigger the anchor during rapport um, or, and then continue with the product presentation? So, um, you know, during mm -hmm. building rapport, right, right. I think that it's also the t good timing you know, to either, you know, trigger any, you know, anchor? No, you know, I don't, honestly, there are some things, but we teach rapport so differently than we, you guys do. do I would love to do one on rapport for you guys, the way yeah. we teach it. We, but, the way um, teach rapport is very different. Than because rapport. we do teach, the way we teach it, yes. And if you're talking about building, mirroring and matching rapport. No, well, necessarily, generally rapport. Right. Like, Right, but we assume rapport during the entire interaction. Yeah, it, we teach people that we teach a lot of paying attention to what they're doing, paying attention to shifts, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, one thing we've had a, um, people have problems with who are not very in tune with people is that they say, but I can't tell what's going on. I said, but did you tell when it shifted? Did you tell when they pulled back? Could you tell when they frowned? Could you tell when you kind of lost them? And they go, oh, I can tell when they shifted, when it changed. Yes, that's the point. So we teach to build rapport during the interaction and to change the rapport a little bit. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a little. Should I tell them a little bit how? A little bit. Okay. Like the basics of how we teach rapport are this: one, you of course use your state, and two, we build it based on um, dominant, equal, and subordinate states. But within those states, we teach you to be, say, a dominant leader or a dominant advisor, or an expert, dominant expert in your field, or an equal friend, or a subordinate student. And these are three very common states that you'll use during a sales presentation. We teach when you walk up, you're an equal friend. And we teach people to build this and to recognize it. And it's kind of warm, friendly, not too much, but an equal friend. And we teach them to build the re initial relationship and warm up the conversation that way. Then, in the sales presentation, we teach people to ask a lot of questions. Now, to ask questions is very important. You're demonstrating, you're demonstrating that you care, that you care what they want, that you care what they need, and that you're willing to listen to them. And everybody wants to be listened to. And in addition, when people are talking about themselves and their needs, They've shown, I believe it's an fMRI, that the brain lights up like crazy, much more than when you're talking. So you want to get people talking. You want to ask questions. And you want to make them feel understood and hopefully actually understand them. So when we start the process where you're asking questions, in a social situation, it's more back and forth. But in a sales situation, there are steps. And we have them go into a subordinate type student. I'm really trying to get you, I understand you. I care about what you're saying. I'm really trying to yeah, in that absorb moment, it's it. It's not about me. You're right. It's all about you. And then as we move through the process, and it does shift, you say, okay, now that I understand what you're looking for, let's talk about what I have to offer you. Firing anchors already, and you go into kind of dominant advisor, okay? Because what's the difference? You're not a dominant cop. You're not a dominant, let me tell you what to do. Yeah. But I'm advising you what I can do for you, what's good for you. And you go into that position, that rapport position, and that's pretty, and I'm simplifying it a bit. And as you present what you have to offer them, firing anchors, mm -hmm. and then we have a lot of processes like our listen match and all sorts of things we do in anchoring. And then you'll drop back to equal friend, Mm -hmm. at a point to talk to them. But when you fire, but, and this is where it gets a little more complex, when we actually do use an, um, set an, fire an anchor on an action, mm -hmm. much of the time we go slightly dominant. Yeah. So, but we do assume that you are one, in rapport with the person, paying attention to the person, and shifting the rapport throughout the interaction to build the relationship and make the person f feel feel good about talking to you, feel good about the relationship, and feel understood. Yeah, uh, one of the things quickly about rapport is, is mm -hmm. number one, we, we have t uh, two fundamental, one fundamental belief. Mm -hmm. People want to be connected to you. Actually, many, many studies have been done that prove this. They're, you know, most people are aching for somebody to just listen to them, mm -hmm. all right? And, and you know... What, to connect. To connect. Right. So... And the second one is this, okay? 
the connection and rapport are more about the role that they need you to play. Right. Rather than you just wow. feeling like connected friends. Yeah. I have a lot of people that I, I That's like true. personally that I would never take advice from. Right. Because they're just not good at it. Okay. You don't want to be their friend. There's a moment no. when you have that friend connection. Right. Okay. Now, the second part of this is but, uh, interesting. To give an example, have you, ever, have you ever been buying something or talking to someone and when they try to go, they're supposed to be the expert, right? And they're very sheepish, very kind of subordinate, kind of well, begging you to mm -hmm. buy or asking Is you to please buy. Sign the please sign the card. And they kind of go into that state. How do you feel? Do you mm -hmm. feel comfortable with what they're selling? Do you feel like they know what they're talking about? And you don't. If someone becomes uncertain, even if you've had a very good interaction, and it's in social and in sales and everywhere else, the other person kind of pulls back. It doesn't feel good. The so, other response is, is that people have a really good connected friend feeling, mm -hmm. and then they go and start talking business, right? And they just go cold, okay? Right. And they just you, they totally disconnect from you. We had a, a we had of people ours do this all the time. This. Was a, yeah, and then she would, you know, never get over it. It's like, and, and we finally had to sit her down and say, look, when you start talking to business, people hate you. Everything you did up to that point, they hate you, all right? She didn't take it. I mean, and it was true. Even her daughter-in-law was with us, and she said, it's true. It's true. You're very unreasonable. I do not like you when you, you know, start selling. It was, it was good advice. She was right. She's very smart about what she did. Mm -hmm. But right. And she was actually... She 30 was, years in the business. 30 years in the business. and the Still struggling in ways. This, okay? They didn't have a lot of referrals. Because people would only do business with them once, right? Because she was so unlikable. All right, so <clears throat> if that makes sense. So anyway, side. That's just another. Yeah. You know, the other thing with with rapport. A lot of people think of it as digital. It's like either friendly or not friendly. Right. Rapport is fluid. Yes. Okay. You can start off at equal. All right. Then go mildly dominant to to make a point. Then mildly subordinate if you think that's a good idea, and then back to equal. Mm -hmm. All right. So fast. And he's talking so, about in a sentence or two. In a sentence or two. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Um, it makes the command seem invisible well, because you go, good. you use it so fast. So, let me give you an example. So, mm -hmm. it, it, as far as the timing of, of mm -hmm. using anchors and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, you know, it's like you go a little bit. You go friend to friend, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Look, I know you can talk to somebody else. Yeah. And you can do that okay. if you want to. But when you're done, give me a call, and I'll help okay. you out, okay? Sounds so good. A little bit equal, mildly right. supported. You can do it if you want to, firing bad anchor, mm -hmm. okay? All right. <clears throat> um, you know, but you know, when you do, you, you get together, if you have any questions, give me a call. Can we a little dominant leader, mm -hmm. give me a call, all right, then back to equal, Okay, that's something, you know. That does touch on you. one principle I just want to, is letting someone off the hook. They're expecting a fight, mm -hmm. and you don't give it to them. There you help build rapport, and mm -hmm. they relax and let their walls down. Right. So you are effective in your communication and your anchoring. But through that, mm -hmm. you know, hey, listen, I understand if you want to. I totally get that. But, you know, if you mm -hmm. do, if you have any questions, why don't you mm -hmm. give me a call, mm -hmm. if that's okay, and then I'll see if I can help you out. Yeah. All right. Through a sentence, you're, the rapport is very fluid. It's not mm -hmm. they like me, they don't like me. Right. Okay? It's filling the role that they need you to fill. You have to be a teacher when they need a teacher. Right. You have to be a student when they need a student. You have to be a friend when they need a friend. And right. sometimes that happens in one sentence. We work a lot on this. In and the thing is, the and the anchors will work without using the way we teach rapport. Mm -hmm. They still work well. It's just that we teach everything layered together, because while an anchor alone is effective, using the anchor with the rapport positioning with everything else is incredibly effective. The results mm -hmm. are much better. 